Hello, today we are going to do an overview of coronal buildups and custom cast posts and gores. These were very important in the past when we did not have the options of having implants. There are a lot of things in this um, presentation that we no longer do because of, like I said, we have other alternatives um, that we no longer need to do, quote, heroics to try to save the tooth because implants have really revolutionized the way we are able to treat some patients. So what were coronal buildups? What was the purpose of them? What materials did we use is what I will be reviewing. First of all, we needed to do a coronal buildup because we needed to retain the final restoration, which is the crown, um, to the tooth. We needed to protect the remaining tooth structure, which at this point, we probably have three quarters or five eighths of the tooth left. There was a significant amount of tooth that was missing. And we needed, we needed to provide a smooth preparation. Um, so when we do take the impression, as you guys have been taking impressions in order to send it to the lab, there needed to be a, a smooth preparation without any undercuts and to clearly show to the lab where the, the edges of the crown is and what type of restoration, what type of crown um, was needed. So what type of buildups did we have? We had a threaded pins. <clears throat> and this was usually done when the tooth was vital. But <clears throat> like I said, there was a portion of the tooth that was missing, maybe a cusp um, fractured off. And a threaded pin was actually placed. <clears throat> Excuse me, you guys, one second. Threaded pins, let me go back and just review, were done when there was a portion of the tooth, a small portion of the tooth that was broken off. And usually at a line angle, we put in a threaded pin, making sure that it did not invade into the pulpal area because then you would need a root canal, but it would um, establish a, a, a place so you could either pack amalgam or pack the composite that we used to use at the time. We had preformed dowels, which are pair post, and this is something that you will be doing in the lab. And they were either cemented or threaded. They were either made of metal or fiber or plastic, and they were built up and they usually were used for primary teeth which means um, if, they, if a root canal was done, mostly we would use the palatal root for sure because it was the largest one. It would, it would have us retain the most amount of material around it. But in case that it was difficult to get in or, there, or you could not place the um, parapost far into one of the canals. Um, in the molar, you have three roots of which you could put these posts. The custom cast dowel core were actually the most sought after and the best type of buildup um, because what that would be done, it wouldn't be a prefabricated parapost. It would actually be that you from the root canal, you remove the gutta percha and you, you would actually, and we're going to go through it in later on in the slides, you would actually make a custom post, dowel post, which would fit, which it, it would fit within the preparation of, um, of, the, of the root in which you prepared. So, and they were always separated from the final restoration. So what you would have is you would have a small preparation prep crown within the root system that would be cemented. And then on top of that, you would have a crown. Then there were also the amalgam core and buildups. And they usually were, if you had, if, if a per, if a person could not afford a custom post and core, and if the preformed dowel post could not be fitted down into the canal, what you would do is you would remove the top 
portion, approximately two to three millimeters of the gutta percha, and you would actually pack the amalgam in there, and the amalgam would then be part of the coronal portion of the um, tooth. Okay, coronal buildups, block outs, and bakes. I've already tried a couple of times, but it does not want to correct. Bonding composites are today considered a very good buildup material. At that time, that's why it says it does not constitute a buildup. It's because the materials were not strong enough, but today they are definitely strong enough. And even the glass ionomer that we have discussed in class is a very good buildup material. So buildup replaces the cusp, the actual wall necessary for the retention of the final restoration. Blockouts are needed to um, cover the defects or the irregularities of the axle or couple walls, and it smooths the wall. Um, it is not necessary for retention, but it definitely, when these are placed, it definitely aids the lab man to know where the final um, preparation is of the prep, as opposed to these irregularities. Sometimes when the model is poured up, um, it becomes, it, it becomes, it doesn't become clear if you have too many um, lines within the preparation. Of course, we always put a base to protect the pulp, okay? So a coronal buildup with pins. As you notice here, um, these are the pins. These that go down, this one looks like it is in the pulp. It is proper, it is as we, no, the x-ray is a flat surface of a three-dimensional object. So I am hoping that this pin is not in the pulp, but is more on the palatal side, and probably so. Um, and that is that for that slide. Okay, so this one up here is what I was discussing as the um, alloy what you do is you remove the inside portion. All of the pulp, the inside chamber is packed with um, amalgam. And then you have a buildup up here um, of amalgam as well. This one down here is your custom post and core. And they also have the prefabricated posts with the amalgam or glass ionomer cores, which um, this. This x-ray is of this. If this is not um, demonstrated here on this slide. What was important in order to determine if we are going to do this, quote, heroics to save the tooth? Definitely, there needed to be, um, the patient needed to be periodontally sound. What do we mean by that? We mean that the pocket readings cannot be further than four millimeters. Also, there has to be a proper crown to root ratio. We want our crown to be one. If that is one, um, one limit of the determination, the crown needs to be at a three limit ratio. Endodonically, um, most often and not, um, we want to have a very good seal of our um, endodontic tooth it cannot have an abscess, it cannot have a discrepancy that will probably make it fail because of the root canal. And there has to be at least three millimeters that the pair of posts, the custom post and core, whatever post you put in, it has to be at least three millimeters in length. Obviously for that to happen, you need to have adequate length of the root. Rono buildups and preoperative evaluation. Um, you have to plan what type of restoration, if it is going to be part of a partial. This, this is very, very tricky even at that time, right? Because you have a tooth that is weakened, number one, endodontically. Um, it becomes brittle. If it's broken, it also has another stress. And then on top of that, if it's going to be an abutment, um, you, at the time, we needed to tell the patient almost to a point, this is only 
this is not going to last you a long time. It is only, um, it's almost as a temporary just to um, extend the life of the crown of the tooth as much as possible. Um, if we started to go into crown lengthening there again to avoid um, violating the biological width and to gain the adequate length of a crown, this also um, would weaken the tooth, right? Because if you are extending, if you're reducing the bone around the root in order to get a proper size crown, which is not gonna violate the biological width. And the biological width is the determination that you need one to, is a minimum of one, but closer to two millimeters from the edge of the crown to the beginning of the bone. Um, here we started to talk about if we have so many violations of of the tooth in order to establish its prognosis, maybe an implant would be considered a better restoration. So successful endodontic treatment, significant tooth structure is missing or will be after a crown preparation is an indication that the cast um, dowel post is needed. It is usually done with anterior or single rooted teeth. Why? It's going to be explained later on in the slide, slides. Um, oval shapes of the canal is, is the best shape of the canal. Why? Because it, it, you are going to be drilling into that canal in order to develop this custom post. And if you have a hourglass, that means you're gonna be re removing a lot of the actual axial wall down into the root. And um, you're also weakening the root when you're doing that. Contraindications are unsuccessful root canals, knowing that you're gonna be needed to be retreated because it's not at the apex or there's still some lateral canals which have not um, been cleaned. Significant coronal tooth structure that um, it says remains, but also what I was gonna say, if there's a lot of tooth structure that is missing that the entire portion of the tooth is only the custom the custom cast um, that will weaken and multi-rooted teeth. Just as I was explaining before, you're gonna have this metal cast going down inside the root. And when the patient is gonna be chewing, the uh, occlusal forces are gonna be going down and it's going to be affecting the post inside this crown. If you have the post that is lateral, it is going to make an internal strain within the tooth itself, and that leads to fractures. Inaccurate, inaccurate root length, obviously, and carries on the root or inside of the canal, that is, that is almost an indication that you are going to lose um, the tooth. Custom cast dowel versus prefabricated. A lot of it has to do with um, the cost in itself. Um, a lot of it also has to do with the shape of the root, as, as I've mentioned. Prefabricated have a tendency to rotate within the preparation. The lack of contact with the walls, why? Because they're pre prefabricated and they're circular. And as we learned, the inside of the tooth is never completely circular. It mimics the outside curvature of the root. So you have areas where the prefabricated post touches the walls and other areas that it does not. A custom cast um, dowel pour um, does it adapts to the irregularity shapes of the canal. It is anti-rotational because what we are going to do and you're going to see there is a way that we are going to 
prepare a keyway so that when the custom post goes in there, there is only going to be one way that it can be inserted into the root. And if you do not have it in specifically that area, it's like a lock and key. It won't insert. Therefore, it's one way in and one way out, and it cannot torque. Okay, so here we see a Dow core setting. You see the irregularities of of the inside of this Y, this is mimicking the inside portion of the root canal tooth. When it is cast, this particular core and cast will only fit in the tooth that you have prepared, okay? How do we do that? Two thirds of the length of the root of the gutta percha needs to be removed. You need to have at least 1.5, here it says 1.4, but you need to have adequate root structure that is remaining around this root in order for it not to fracture. Because there, as I told you, the patient's gonna be chewing, the pressure that is gonna be put on the crown is gonna go into the custom post. And depending on how deep it is in here and how well it is placed, there's going to be internal pressures that are going to come out laterally. Ideally, five millimeters from the apex, a minimum of three. Okay, so when we have our custom post and core, how are we going to temporize it, right? Because if we understand you have your tooth that has been prepared, you do not have a coronal portion of the tooth, you've already made your custom post, but now you have to send it to the lab to get cast. And then on top of that, you need to have the crown around it. So what you have to do is you have to make a temporary custom post and core inside. So you can read here, the crown preparation, um, you have to evaluate how much tooth structure is remaining. You have to prepare the canal for the dowel. You have to fabricate the, um, the dowel and I will go through it in the future slides. You have to do the buildup. So the lab is going to not only have the dowel post but it's gonna have the tooth that is gonna be fabricated um, as the prepared tooth, okay? There cannot be expansion of this material, right? Once you place it in there and you send the um, post and cord to the lab, it can expand. It has to maintain its consistency. If it expands or contracts, if it expands, it's not gonna fit inside the tooth once it comes back. And if it contracts, it's gonna be just like a regular parapost that it's gonna to have too much area all the way around it that isn't touching the root surface. Okay, so the crown is prepared. Again, you have to ev evaluate the remaining tooth structure. You have to reduce the remaining two structures so that there is at least three millimeters of incisal and occlusal clearance. Why so much? Because not only do you have, you're going to be cementing the dowel post in there, but you also need to have room that a crown is going to be on top. The, the edge of the pair of the parapost, not the parapost, the dowel post, I'm sorry, needs to be beveled. The reason for that is that the crown needs to have a beveled edge in order for there not to be a gap between the crown and the parapost. When I went to dental school, we actually were not allowed to put the crown on top of the parapost system, but actually needed to be on tooth structure. So this is going to be your crown preparation. You have right here, your root canal. This is actually quite a bit of tooth structure here um, th that I would say 
it does not necessarily need custom post and core, but say that this is very weak. And when the preparation is done, you only have this portion from here to here. So you're gonna need to put the top coronal portion in with your um, custom post and core. Okay, so you remove the gutta percha, it's with this piezo reamer, you, or you can remove the gutta percha with the warm technique. You verify the length. And, and here it says with the periapical radiograph, there's also the documentation when you did the root canal, you say, okay, I did a size 35, as you guys remember filing size 35, the length was 17. Well, from there, you're gonna say from 17, I wanna have eight millimeters, whatever, you know how much of the tooth you, um, of the gutta percha inside the root you can remove. You absolutely cannot have an undercut. If you have an undercut, it will not draw. Okay, so here they are removing, you see how here, they prepared the tooth and indeed they have cut it back to that portion. Now they are inside removing the gutta percha and they are from three to five millimeters from the apex. You do not want to dislodge or to remove any area of, of this because if you do, you open up, you can open up the chances of opening up bacteria in the lateral canal. Here, they are estimating with one of the old films. Like I said, you can do it this way. Nowadays, they probably wouldn't do it anyway because they have different x-rays, but you definitely have the documentation of how deep um, the, the, the root went. Here is what I was describing before. You have this circular um, preparation, but you have this latch here. And this is going to be like the key that when you put your custom post and core down here, it will insert in this slot and it will not rotate in one way or another. Dow portion of a pattern. Okay, this, what you do is you have a plastic and from the plastic, it, it is acrylic. You make little cuts all along the plastic edge and you have to put it and you have to make sure that you measure that it goes all the way down to the edge here of the preparation. So imagine from here all the way up and even further up, it is circular in nature. It is right down here, it's gonna bind, it's gonna be close. But up here, there's gonna be a lot of room. And what you will be doing is you will be using what we used to call a salt and pepper technique. So you have your plastic, what we used to call a toothpick. You lubricate it in the liquid of the monomer that makes the plastic sticky. And then you will take the powder and attach it to the liquid and start pumping it into the canal of the tooth. And eventually the, the, um, the monomer and the liquid and the powder become hard. But as you're pumping it, it will not attach to the sides of the root. But but so you pump it up and down, it won't attach, but it will become hard taking its shape, that shape. So here we go, pumping up and down, not up here, but all the way down below, you have your liquid and your powder that are getting hard. And you continue to do so. This is that you've placed a notch on the facial so you know properly, um, how to insert it, right? Every single time you insert it, it has to go in the same place. And it's Durlay. You have your powder and you have your liquid. They're self-curing resins. And here we go. It's a thin coating. 
that you place inside so it does not stick and you move it up and down. You continue to do so, I'm gonna go back. You continue to do so until the dura lay is all the way up here and it conforms to the top portion of the tooth. Then from there, you will take a, we used to use like a very, very fine tooth um, paintbrush and we would add and we would actually build up and make a crown, but a prepped type of crown. It wouldn't be the natural shape completely of the tooth. It would be the shape of the tooth as if we were to prep it. There is also another way of, of doing it, and it is with a syringe. So you have here, here it was, as I described, all the way up above at the top. And then with the syringe, you would actually make your prepped tooth. When that is all done, this is what you would see. Obviously, you don't have the material down here. Why? Because it is the circular shape of the preparation that you went. But as you go up, there is more latitude because of the preparation that is it's conical in shape. And here is where the material starts. Obviously, you don't want to have any voids. You want to be careful to make sure that this is one complete solid piece because this is what is going to be melted as, as they make the crown. You melt this and then they will, um, it's nor normally done in gold. When they um, put it in, in the machine, the gold goes into the pocket area that this fills, right? You put this in the material, You what it does, it melts out. And then what is remaining in there is a copy of this um, particular amount of buildup and then the gold is shot in there. Coronal portion of, of pattern, place the monomer and the po polymer in the dappen dish. And it's just as I um, described before. Here you see that they are building by hand. Um, the coronal portion of the tooth. There it is. This portion obviously is going to be cut off once the lab um, casts this. Using the appropriate diamond and carbide bird to finish the preparation. Um, in dental school, what we used to do is wait for we used to get it very close and then once the pack, the um, custom post and core was cemented in to the tooth we um, would actually prepare because our margins needed to be on tooth so we didn't want to do too much finishing out of the mouth okay so here's the pattern once again and you invest and cast with no expansion. You do not polish, obviously, the, bow, the dowel post of the casting. Why? Because that is going to fit like a glove in hand inside the, the tooth. Okay. Temporization is tricky, right? Because we want to have the patient, especially these were done in the anterior teeth. We want them to leave with teeth. So we, we take a, um, our temporary with a, with a aluminum, aluminum post. You see down here below, we just leave it without any material. The top third of it, we do insert um, our temporary material in order to retain some retention. Preparation variations, this is indirect, it's one piece. 
combination is parallel and tapered walls. In this, in this variation, you actually have the dowel post is the, the final crown of the tooth. So you do not have two pieces, you only have one, meaning that instead of having it this way, the post would, would be in there and you would have a tooth out here. So it would be all one piece. This is the final result. Now, there, this is not on the slide, but just to add some information, when we would have this portion of the tooth and it was in the mouth and we knew that we had a very thick, wide anterior tooth, we would also at times, if we didn't want to do the salt and pepper technique, we would actually inject impression material down inside and we would remove it just like you were if it was a natural crown. And once we remove it, if it was all in one place, all connected, we, you would be able to send that impression to the lab and it would be the same thing as doing this salt and pepper technique, but it would take a lot less time, obviously, because this would be all in impression material. So this is mostly for your information. We are going to be doing not these custom post and core, but the Parapost system. But this is just a very brief overview, probably nothing that you will be doing in um, the the office these days because if a tooth is broken down to this point, like I said before, we normally um, look at implants. They are more of a reliable long-term restoration than the tooth that has so many issues in involving um, tooth structure that has been removed. Thank you so much for your attention and we'll see you next time.